Hello, my name is Lars Jorgensen. I'm CEO of Thorcon Power, and I'm here to do a little interview. Uh, thorium is an uh, element that works very well in a molten salt reactor. Um, it's lighter than uranium, so it will produce less plutonium in a reactor than a uranium reactor will. So, the thorium is uh, difficult to process from a solid fuel reactor, but in a molten salt reactor you don't have to do that kind of processing, so it flows very nicely into a molten salt fueled reactor. Well, it was one of the most successful experimental reactors in the U.S. It was uh, architected by the same gentleman who did the light water reactors, and he did it because he wanted something that was safer than the light water reactors. Um, it ran for four years as an experimental reactor, and the plans for the next one was to do a 300 megawatt version. Now we're building a 500 megawatt version, so we're very in line with what uh, Oak Ridge had initially. The uh, world follows the leader, and light water reactors had the lead by far. Um, they then were looking at breeders, and there were two competitors the uh, molten salt reactor and the sodium fueled reactor. Sodium salt molten salt reactor and the sodium cooled reactor. The sodium cooled reactor had stronger political support and so when they had to cut the budget it was the molten salt reactor that got cut. And since then we haven't designed any new experiment, uh, demonstration reactors. We just have gone out of that business. So the Thorcon design was uh, aimed first at having full passive safety. So in the case of any kind of accident the reactor will shut itself off and will cool itself by laws of physics, not because it needs some electricity to run some pump that might fail or an operator has to change some uh, valve someplace. It does it all simple physics. Water evaporates, bubbles go up in liquid, um, things fall in gravity. Those kind of properties are the things we depend on to be sure that we turn ourselves off and we cool ourselves in the event of an accident. No, no. Uh, in fact, for our final test of our demonstration reactor, we will put it through the paces of an accident that's more severe than Fukushima, where we lose the, all cooling, lose all electricity right away, lose all operator support, and still the reactor will shut itself off and cool itself. In order to make a significant difference in the world, we have to be a lot more cost competitive than current reactors. So we actually have to be cost competitive with coal. We've designed it from the ground up, targeting to be cost competitive with coal. We take advantage of the fact that a, in a molten salt reactor, you have no high pressure. So we don't need the big uh, reinforced steel and concrete structures that they have with light water reactors. We built it very much like a ship. In fact, the founder of the company built for the world's largest oil carriers. And we architected it very much like that kind of a ship. That means that instead of building a power plant using local staff for the first time building a power plant, we'll be building it in a shipyard using staff that have built hundreds of ships before. That gives us much higher productivity and much higher uh, quality, resulting in lower cost. So our plans are to build a power plant factory that can do 10 to 20 gigawatts of new power plants each year. If we were to build one as large as an existing shipyard in South Korea, we could churn out 100 gigawatts of new power every year. That's enough to meet the entire world's demand. Well, we plan to build that power plant factory in Indonesia and to be exporting from Indonesia to the rest of the world. This will bring in an industry the size of Boeing or uh, Airbus, uh, all total, the electric market is the size of the oil industry worldwide, eventually. Not today, but when Southeast Asia and South America and, and Africa all get geared up in electricity the way we expect everybody to, then that market will be as large as today's oil market. It's a very, very large market. That gives plenty of work to do. So, the shipbuilding, the steel to supply to build the ships with, the recycling yards, there are many places where there is a lot of work to do. The total business we're talking about here is measured in trillions of dollars. Building the first of a kind, especially of a nuclear reactor, uh, involves some uncertainties and some public opposition. So it takes a lot of political courage to step forward to build the first one. 
Um, that's a political courage we don't have in the United States, but it's one that we find that is present in Indonesia. So that's the biggest challenge. Uh, another challenge is that there are no regulations for molten salt reactors any place in the world. Somebody needs to invent them. So this will be a challenge for the regulator. Uh, in Indonesia we find a regulator that is smart and anxious to actually get to work on a power plant. Uh, they've been around for quite a while. They've regulated three research reactors here, so they already know what they're doing. Um, we're looking forward to working with them. So, in the U.S., we have a regulatory regime that's very much centered around light water reactors. If you want to build a new reactor, you have to show that it's safe based on validated software code that the regulator approves. That code works for light water reactors. The, if you want to build something that's not a light water reactor, you have to use validated code. But in order to get validated code, you have to build a test reactor. In order to have a test reactor, you have to show that it works with validated code can't get there from here. The U.S. has to rewrite their regulations before they can do this. And the U.S. has plenty of cheap natural gas. Um, so there's some strong political forces and economic forces to say we don't need to take on the risk. So, so in the United States we don't need that extra power. So there's no politician willing to step forward to combat the forces that drive natural gas. Well, Japan has uh, had some recent bad experience with uh, nuclear power, so there's a lot of opposition. Um, and Japan is even more uh, scared than the U.S. Uh, Japan has made some very, very poor decisions because they're scared. Fear has driven Japan to do things like evacuating a hospital in the middle of the night when everything was ruined by tsunami. A thousand people died from that fear. Nobody died from the radiation. There are very few countries in the world that have experience regulating nuclear, so they have an existing nuclear uh, regulatory regime that are not deeply dead set into light water reactors. The choices are very few. Uh, Indonesia is also the fourth largest country in the world by population and yet it hasn't built out its electricity yet. So once we get approved here, there's a very large market to look forward to to satisfy the electricity demands just in Indonesia alone. And so the uh, power plant is built much like a ship. And in fact, we would plan to build a power plant factory that looks just like a shipyard that specializes in building our power plants. That factory will churn out the equivalent of 10 to 100 large ships every year. Uh, so this whole industry would be something we would build up in Indonesia. In addition, um, that takes a lot of steel. There's no reason we can't buy that steel from Indonesia. Once it's established and we're going, Indonesia will have the latest and greatest technology for being able to build ships. So uh, currently in the world there is no molten salt reactor. And there is no nation that currently is writing regulations for that. Indonesia would become the world's leader in the most advanced reactor. The one that can really take on the majority of the market because it can be cost competitive with oil, coal. So Indonesia would become the world's first molten salt reactor nation and the world's leading production of nuclear power.